Good morning all. I've been working pretty hard making this new breadboard circuit. So what can we see? Well, some components, but uh, what's this? This is a quarter inch jack plug. So I think we're thinking microphone. And this is an eighth of an inch stereo jack plug, which goes off to the powered speaker. So I think really we're thinking microphone preamp or as the magazine article would call it, input amplifier. Shall we see if it works? I've plugged in a microphone cable, the other end of which has an XLR on it. Um, I've got my solar power, oh, 14.4 volts. The sun's out and uh, we're in the, oh, what's it called? The saturation phase, yeah, that's it. Right, let's power up my uh, 12 1202 power supply. Now there may be a bit of a thump here when I switch this on. Uh, let's switch that on. Oh, that doesn't sound good, does it? No, that doesn't sound at all good. I think what it is, is the XLR connector needs to be plugged into a mic. Now I've got two mics. Uh, this one is dynamic, so we're thinking diaphragm, coil of wire, uh, magnet. This one I think is an electret condenser microphone. Let's use that one because it's got a slightly better frequency response. Let's plug that in. Power this up again. Ooh. Yes, that sounds pretty good. Now this is interesting. There's a buzzing from the speaker. You can probably, oh, if I avoid feedback, you can probably hear it there. That's actually coming from my solar charge controller because it's in PWM mode. It's the 122 Hertz from the solar charge controller. So if the sun goes in, that'll go away. How interesting is that? Right, now there is there are two parts to this circuit. Let me bring the uh, circuit diagram over. We've got uh, the input gain stage. Now the output from this microphone is probably a few millivolts. So we need to get that up to about one volt peak to peak for the speaker. So this uh, pair of op amps here is doing the uh, gain. Over here we've got a tone control and I have built it, but I'm not entirely happy with the layout. It's all rather messy, but let's just see if the tone control works. Let's get this quite close to me. Oh, that's not good, is it? In fact, that's pretty useless. I'm going to have to switch to a ceramic screwdriver. Okay, now on to the ceramic screwdriver, so we shouldn't get that horrible buzz when I put it in the pot. Right, let's try turning it to this side. Oh, I'm going to turn the speaker. Oh, let's turn the speaker away so we don't get that feedback. So if I turn it to this side, we get more treble response and a dip in uh, bass level. If I turn it this way, we get more of a bass response. In fact, that's horrible because it's at a sort of boomy frequency and we get a treble cut. So I'm going to bring it back and give it a little bit of treble boost, which will uh, enhance intelligibility. Now let's turn the other pot. This is just a level control and it's set very low. That cuts it off altogether. This uh, brings it so that we can hear it. And then of course, if I go higher, it just gets crazy loud. So we've got actually more gain in the gain stage uh, than we need here. Well, it seems that a lot of the uh, pickup of that 122 Hertz, which must be coming through the power supply ultimately, because it's coming from the solar charge controller. It does seem to be being picked up by the microphone. Because if I switch that off, that buzzing completely disappears. Yeah, lovely analog noisy circuits. I shall now have a bit of a tidy up and then uh, we'll go through this circuit taking a look at um, how it works and some of the problems I had. And I might even do a little bit of a mod to that tone control section. Right, with my breadboard out of the way, let's just bring the camera down a little bit and take a look at this circuit and some of the problems I had with it. Well, the first problem is that these op amps have no pin numbers on them. So I was relying on the plus and the minus, the uh, non-inverting and the inverting signs to tell me how to wire the thing up. The only problem is in this diagram, they're wrong. On this one, that's minus and that's plus. And even this one is wrong as well. That's plus and that's minus. Now, this one I really should have known because you don't apply feedback from the output round to the positive input pin because that's positive feedback, which is fine if you want it as a comparator, but it's not going to work as an amplifier. So that one um, I now 
no is this way around and of course it works uh, this one was a bit more tricky because this tone control has this sort of network of resistors and capacitors I should have seen the positive input to ground that would have given me a clue that that actually is the negative input but we got there in the end this one is not marked at all but this is a fairly standard op amp circuit it's a unity gain buffer the output goes to negative and the input goes to positive this is a non-inverting unity gain buffer amplifier so gain for the low level microphone signal is uh, achieved by these two op amps this one here and this first one here this one has a gain of approximately 10 you can see the feedback resistor is 100k the resistor to ground now they've done this implemented this resistor to ground in a rather odd way they've done it through one of the switch contacts of the input socket so that it can be removed from the circuit if you put a line input in and of course if that 11k resistor doesn't go to ground then the gain of this op amp becomes one because there's no potential divider going back to the inverting input and therefore the resistor here despite its high value acts a bit like this it acts as a unity gain buffer with this 11k to ground we've got approximately a gain of 10 here 100k over around 10k in the first op amp we've got 22k feedback resistor and a 470 ohms for the microphone channel it's just slightly different if this is a line input this circuit is actually built twice for two parts of the vocoder uh, so that gives a gain of 22k over 470 ohms well that's about 25k over 500 ohms which would be 50k over 1k yeah a gain of about 50 there gain of 10 here so we've got a total gain of about 500 which is perfect for bringing a couple of millivolts on the microphone up to a one volt peak to peak here which can drive the amplifier now there are various capacitors in this circuit there's a capacitor here this one is uh, mainly for dc offset so if there's any dc offset coming from the microphone say the condenser microphone had a little bit of dc offset this capacitor blocks it uh, this is a ground reference this also works as a slight uh, base cut or high pass filter this capacitor here is quite interesting this also um, cuts the very low frequencies but we can actually calculate here um, the frequency at which the gain is halved or drop, drops by three decibels and uh, you do that by working out the frequency at which this 22 microfarad capacitor has a reactance which is similar to resistance uh, it's part of impedance a reactance of 470 ohms so I'm going to do that now so I'm going to use the formula um, reactance x equals 1 over 2 pi f c where f is frequency c is capacitance so of course we can rearrange that for f equals 1 over 2 pi x c now we want a reactance of 470 ohms because if this capacitor introduces another 470 ohms into this path to ground then the gain of this amplifier is going to be halved so we can work out the frequency at which the gain of the amplifier drops off to half which is the minus 3 db uh, gain point so reactance needs to be um 470 so we're going to have 2 times pi times 470 times the capacitance which is 22 times 10 to the minus 6 because it's microfarads so I need to uh, multiply all that lot together so let's do this with a wholly inappropriate calculator it's uh, 2 times pi I don't have a pi button 3.14159 uh, times 470 no not 4700 can I cancel that will it uh, let me carry on 470 times no it's forgotten everything 2 times 3.14159 times 470 times oh 22 times 10 to the minus 6 is a uh, point oh 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 022 equals 
it's that. Now I need to do one over. Well, there's no one over. So I'll have to add that to the memory and then do one divided by bring the memory back equals. And that's the answer, 15 hertz. So the roll off um, to three decibels down occurs at 15 hertz. This is a base cut little bit of roll off circuitry. So any frequency below 15 hertz, this gain is going to reduce down and down and down until this at DC, this capacitor is effectively open circuit and therefore that resistor doesn't exist. And in much the same way as that resistor not existing turns this into unity gain, this um, path to ground not existing will make unity gain here as well. So at DC, there's no gain in this stage. Now there's a capacitor here in the feedback loop. Um, the lower we take that feedback capacitor, the less gain we have in this stage. So this capacitor is going to conduct more at high frequencies. So at high frequencies, very high frequencies, this is just 68 picofarads, uh, it will reduce the gain of this stage. So this is just a, um, a very high frequency, probably ultrasonic uh, gain reducer so that you don't, you don't pass very high frequencies through this stage. So we've got a low frequency roll off, a high frequency roll off, a DC blocking input capacitor so that uh, audio signals within the audible range pass through this and have a gain of approximately 500. I was looking at this circuit last night and I was trying to sort of imagine this laid out in a slightly different arrangement. And so I started doing a little sketch. This is my sketch. And it's occurred to me that um, this complex network of resistors and capacitors only connects to my second op amp here in four places. Uh, the output of the previous op amp, the input pin two, input pin three, which is ground, and pin one, which is the output of this op amp. So as long as I arrange for the output of the previous op amp to be in what is effectively position pin zero, then I can put this entire network with the potentiometer onto that chip on just four pins. And so I'm going to make up a little Vero daughter board. So let's hoik all these components out because I never liked this messy arrangement. Uh, there are four capacitors, six resistors, I believe. Uh, a lot of these wires can go. Let's just pull all those out. There's the pot and those are the remaining two resistors. Yes, I'm going to make up my little daughter board plug it in here and it's all going to be beautifully neat. You see, you can't do this with surface mount components, can you? I love doing this. I love soldering breadboards and circuit boards and bits of Vero board with through hole components. I love it. So we've got pot goes to pin two. Yeah, uh, the two capacitors go to ground, which is pin three on the op amp. Uh, pin one will be one of these nodes in the resistor capacitor network. And pin zero is the output from the previous stage. So these two caps can go on here. Oh, I didn't anchor that on very well, did I? Let's just anchor that on a bit better. But I don't want to move my capacitors and lose my beautiful alignment. That looks good. Now the capacitors can't join here, so I'll need to drill a hole separating them. So I use my little, I think it's a three millimeter drill with a sort of handle on it. Came in one of those inkjet refill kits, but it's really good for um, putting cutting holes in in strip board, far better than the official cutters, which just don't work. 47k runs from the other side of these big caps back to either side of the pot. But I've got to remember these 1k5s actually cross over as they come round. So two of these are 15k and two of them are 51k. They do look quite similar. Uh, got to make sure I don't get those the wrong way around. Okay, let's get those in. Now this crossing over thing where this 1k5 crosses to that side, this one crosses to that side. I'm going to implement with a couple of crossed wire links up at this end of the board. 
obviously making sure they don't touch but they are going to cross over so let's do that right the final thing is a four pin uh, what would you call it dupont connector which fits on the bottom of this board and then this whole daughter board will plug into the breadboard i hope i've done this right uh, and then I'll, I'll i'll have a close-up of this and here is my little daughter board and isn't it wonderfully symmetrical the little uh, crossover links there uh, are these crossed over 1k5 resistors and then on the back um, these two points which return to pins one and zero i've implemented with a couple of flying wires just got to be a bit careful of those that i don't short them to anything and then here's my connector uh, pin zero pin one pin two pin three of the op amp pin two goes to the pot center pin three goes to these two 220 uh, nanofarad capacitors they're grounded and pin three of the op amp is grounded is it going to work let's find out so positive goes to positive and negative goes to the negative that's plus 12 volts minus 12 volts ground and we've got to find a ground point i think that's a ground point there pretty sure that's a ground point and then my little daughter board goes pins zero one two and three. Oh, look at that that looks awesome it's a bit stupid this isn't it really putting a vero daughter board onto a breadboard but that's what i wanted to do right let's hook up the microphone turn on the powered speaker put some power from the solar power system onto this preamp turn it on oh heard a click from the speaker well i better try it Where's the microphone here it is hello well that seems to work uh now i've got to find out whether turning this pot varies the tone I don't want to short anything out. That's the wrong screwdriver. I'll get the right one. Here's the right one. This little ceramic one. Turn it that way. Oh yes, that's increased the bass, reduced the treble. Turn it that way. Oh yeah, that's increased the treble and reduced the bass. So it looks like I've got it right. This thing wobbles about a bit, but uh, actually I might be able to solve that by putting a pin right at the far end. Okay, so let's solder that pin right on the end there. Get a nice good anchorage for that. And that's my stabilizing pin. It's not actually connected to anything. Right, let's plug my little circuit in with the new stabilizing pin. Uh, now I've got to get this in the right place. It's pin zero there. Ah, yes, that works on the microphone. Now, can I adjust the tone from the uh, very trebly, oh, and rather feedbacky position across to the uh, more boomy and frankly rather useless position? So I think I'll just leave it um, over that end. Yes, I'm very pleased with that. It's very neat. Now, the other thing I made for this um, is a little adapter board from the mono microphone jack 6.35 millimeter quarter inch to a dual in line actually four tenths dual in line but it could have been three tenths uh microphone socket so this is a breadboard friendly mono jack socket let's see if i can get that in the right place i think it's there plug in my microphone which hopefully will cut down on the buzzing from the speaker and yeah that's all good so these um jack sockets which are made breadboard friendly by these little breakouts are really handy i want to do some with some rca sockets some phono sockets so i might actually design a pcb for that but uh yeah that's it for today i just wanted to make this input amplifier this microphone preamp with tone control <laughs> gone about it a slightly odd way but meh whatever Cheerio.